It was eight months ago the Kent State baseball team captured the hearts of the entire state and parts of the region with a stunning trip to Omaha, a last at bat victory in the Super Regional in Oregon, and a game for the ages to lead off the regional against Kentucky. Now they are forced to turn the page and keep those memories pressed firmly in the scrapbooks. Hi again, everybody. I'm Ty Linder with head coach Scott Strickland. And coach, as fun and as memorable as that ride was, the unfortunate part of this business is now you and your players have to flush those memories and refocus for another ride. Yeah, you got to turn the page, and that's going to be really difficult for us. You know, it was an unbelievable 2012, but it's a new season. And what we've done in the past isn't going to do anything to help us uh, today, tomorrow, uh, and in the future. So we've got to turn the page. We've got to get, get our kids focused on what we need to do uh, in front of us and, and not worry about what's behind us. So, yeah, it's, it's definitely a challenge. Associate head coach and pitching guru Mike Birkbeck prior to the 2012 season said, they all know what we lost. They don't know what we have coming back. And, Coach, that was such a poignant statement coming off a big win in Austin against the Texas Longhorns prior to last season. Can it be applied again to this year? There's no question. I don't think it's as much as a secret anymore. I mean, before we would be a little bit underneath the radar, on the national scene at least, and now everybody knows who we are. But we certainly have some players that are very talented that didn't play as much last year. And a couple guys that stand out to me in the bullpen are Eric Dorsch and, and Dan Kopchak. Those are two guys that were on our staff last year, didn't pitch a whole lot for us, but uh, they improved over the summer. They got really... Uh, really good innings for us in the fall, and we feel like they're going to be a big part of that bullpen. It seemed like every time the Golden Flashes were either playing a championship game or an advancement game, Tyler Scalina was in the middle of the diamond for you. That's a pretty good guy to anchor your weekend rotation. Yeah, he's got a lot of experience. Having him in those games, when you think about it, he was pitching in championship games, a regional final, super regional final, uh, elimination game in Omaha. So it's a natural progression for him to go into that number one slot. Uh, I think he's got the pedigree to do it. He's got the confidence to do it, and we feel like he's going to be a great number one starter for us. We've seen it in the past. When teams, and specifically in the conference, beat Kent State, they celebrate. It's just not an ordinary win. They celebrate like they've just won a championship. That only seems now like it's going to be amped up, don't you think? I don't think there's any question about that, that teams are going to be ready to play us. And like you said, in, in the conference in the past, it's been that way before. But I, I think even in the preseason, the, the games that we're playing on the road, it's a big game because of what we did last year. Every program uh, in America wants to get to Omaha. And, and when you get there, you put a target on your back for the future. And that's a good thing. Expectations are a good thing. We, we just need to prepare our kids for that, that uh, they're going to get every team's best shot. And especially when we get in the conference, teams are going to be gunning for us. And uh, we just got to be ready for that challenge. I know that when you put your schedule together, it's, it's usually done two years in advance. So you're trying to gauge who you're going to have on your team. And coming off a, a College World Series berth, you have a nice schedule. But at the same time, it's going to be very unforgiving if your guys aren't ready to play every weekend. There's no question. I mean, the first weekend with UNC Wilmington and Virginia Tech are two teams that are projected to be regional teams at the end of the year, picked to win their conference, UNC Wilmington is. And then we go out to San Diego, who's a top 20 team. We go to Louisville, who's a top five team. Then we go to Charlotte, who's always picked to win the Atlantic 10. And then Memphis, who's a very good conference USA team. So our first five weekends are very challenging. And then we play Notre Dame uh, right after we play Northern Illinois that first weekend mm -hmm. over in the Chicago area. So it's, it is a very tough early slate. And uh, we try to do that on purpose. We try to to toughen our kids up, to put them in adverse situations, to put them in, in really good atmospheres, college baseball atmospheres with good fans and, and big crowds and nice stadiums against good teams. And if we can do that, then we're going to be ready for the end of the season. Seems like Kent State's always coming into a season off a championship. This one's a little bit different, and everybody around here knows that. How will your kids respond to the expectation level that bar raised even higher than it normally is. Well, again, expectations are a good thing. That's what we talk to our kids about. Our kids haven't changed the way they work. They work very hard. And the message that we've sent to our kids is how great last year was. Mm -hmm. What are you going to have to do to get back there? So our kids are working very hard. They're focused. Um, and they know there's going to be some bumps in the road. But uh, our kids are ready to play. And uh, I'm excited to watch our kids play to their potential and, and get ourselves into contention in the Mid-American Conference again get to that conference tournament and uh, hopefully roll into another regional. 
Coach, when you look back at, at your run in 2012, that very long winning streak toward the end of the year, you did a great job of staying healthy all through the year. Some of that is luck, certainly. You didn't see a lot of adversity in, in that sort of thing. Will this team be ready if that should strike at some point during the year? Well, I don't know. I mean, injuries usually happen, mm -hmm. and uh, unfortunately, we have an injury. George Roberts is going to be out for a few weeks. Uh, he's got a handmade injury in his wrist, and a preseason All-American, and a preseason MAC Player of the Year. So uh, we've already had some of that adversity. We're going to see how our kids respond to that. And you can't expect to be 100% healthy all the time. We've got some bullpen arms that are a little bit sore right now, nothing that we feel is going to keep them out for any extended period of time. But in order to be successful, you have to be healthy. And when you look at the teams that, that win championships and move on to the championship rounds in college baseball, there are teams that stay healthy. Very few teams that have injuries advance. And, and that's what we were fortunate with last year. And we need to get ourselves healthy for that final stretch run. When you look at who you have coming back, and you mentioned George Roberts is certainly a, a big key in his return. His roommate, Evan Campbell, will, will be certainly counted on. I think a, a person right now that may be flying under the radar a little bit that may be counted on is Jason Bagoli. And everybody knew his story from last year. Who else needs to step up for you guys here in the non-conference? Well, I, I think when you look at our team every single year, we've had some guys that maybe the year before weren't huge parts of our team were contributors, but then they turned into major parts. And, and I go all the way back to Greg Rowan. Greg mm -hmm. Rowan was a guy that was hurt his redshirt sophomore year and came back his his uh, next season and, and was uh, hit 20 home runs for us. And then Kyle McMillan was a guy that, yeah. as a freshman, got very few at-bats and came back as a sophomore and was one of our best hitters. And So we always kind of look for one of those guys from the year before that may have been a contributor to become a major contributor. And, and guys, Jason, Jason Magoli is one of those guys that needs to step up. I think we're going to see some increased production from Alex Miklos and Sawyer Poland and TJ Sutton. Those guys were very key parts to our team, but they were in the back of that order. Now they're going to be counted on to, to drive in some more runs and, and hit a little bit more in bigger situations. Tommy Monnet, Jason Bagoli, guys like that we're, we're going to have some high expectations for. And, and again, I don't know who it's going to be, mm -hmm. but every year it seems to be someone steps up, and I'm excited to see who that's going to be. You had some great pieces last year in your clubhouse. Even They were great on the field, but they were even better sometimes in the clubhouse when you think about guys like David Lyon and, and, and David Starr and guys who, who had been around the program. Does leadership transfer over an off season? Is it something that's there all of a sudden now on opening day with new faces, or does it happen as the season goes on? I think it happens as the season goes on. Sometimes you have guys, David Lyon, a natural born leader. Mm -hmm. He's very uh, vocal. He's going to say what he's thinking. And Greg Rowan, I go back to mm -hmm. him same way. Andrew Davis going back seven, eight years, guys that were very vocal. We don't have that vocal leadership necessarily this year, but guys like Evan Campbell and George Roberts and Jason McGoley, Casey Wilson, guys that have won three straight championships and been in three straight regionals, they need to be our leaders. They need to step up. We're going to look to some of the juniors and Derek Tovine and TJ Sutton and even Tyler Scalina, guys like that that can be leaders for us. And it may be more lead by example, but as we go, those guys need to grow into those leadership roles and, and help us win another championship. Coach, before we let you go, just a quick word on the Mid-American Conference. It, it looked like across the board last year when you were making your run is all of those other teams in the MAC said, well, this is good for the conference because now we have to step our game up. Yeah, I think everyone is going to do that. I think our conference is going to continue to get better. I think what we did helped everybody, and I think we, we said that. We all said that, that this is good for Kent State, but it's also good for our conference mm -hmm. and for Northern baseball in general. So I think you're going to see a lot of teams step up and get better, and uh, you look to the other side, it's the usual suspects. It's it's uh, Toledo and Central Michigan. I think Eastern Michigan's going to be very good this year. Mm -hmm. Western Michigan's going to be good. Uh, those four teams, I think, on the West are the, the teams that I think most people would pick. Northern Illinois and Ball State are certainly good teams, and, and they're going to fight to try to get to the top. And when you look at our side, Miami, I, I believe, is going to be a good team this year. OU's got a new head coach, and they're kind of feeling their way through. But I think they'll be very competitive. And our neighbors eight miles to the, to the west, are, they're going to be good as well. Akron's going to get better under Rick Rembelak. And Buffalo had a good run last year. And Bowling Green's going to be good. And it's, it's always competitive in this conference. And, and I, I think you're going to see everybody step up and certainly give us their best shot. Well, conference play will start for the Golden Flashes in mid-March. Awaiting them in the meanwhile is a very challenging non-conference schedule. They head to the west, they head to the south. They'll be getting some battles here as we go toward conference play. Our thanks to head coach Scott Strickland. We look forward to the March 20th home opener, which is incidentally the first day of spring, Kent State and Pittsburgh at the new Schoonover Stadium. For head coach Scott Strickland of the Golden Flashes baseball team, I'm Ty Linder. Go Flashes!